Welcome to this radio channel and today we're having part 3 of our series on propagation of shortwave radio signals. Now we're going to talk about solar activity. Solar activity has a major impact on shortwave listening. Um, probably of all the radio spectrums, um, any frequencies that are below 30 megahertz are probably the most affected by what the sun is doing, how it's uh, acting up. And um, basically, there are several things that will happen in, uh, first of all, the solar activity. Solar activity has a 11-year cycle. It's an average, by the way. Um, don't th think of it as being exactly 11 years. The average is 11, but uh, we've seen cycles that had um, only 6 years in length. And we had cycles that had 18 years in length. So it is really, really something that is an average. We are right now on solar cycle 24. And we are on the downside. So if you look at this red line here, because this is the uh, incomplete data, the black lines are the, the complete data. This is what the uh, solar flux or the solar activity, sorry, uh, how many sunspots were on the sun uh, in each cycle. And we're on the, the downside. Now, how far on the downside? Um, probably still, you know, close to the top, but lower than it was a year or two ago. Basically, what you want is to be in the um, upside of a solar cycle. Because the higher the solar activity, which is often related to the number of sunspots, by the way, the more shortwave signals propagate well because usually more uh, solar activity means that the ionosphere is probably uh, more solid. It's capable of you know producing and propagating signals that um, have higher frequencies also. So very often in the top of a solar cycle 10 meter band of amateur radio on 28 megahertz is open pretty much every day. But on the downside of a solar cycle, the amount of energy from the sun is much lower and basically it affects the maximum usable frequency. So if you hear the term MUF or maximum usable frequency, it's that frequency that is the highest that the ionosphere will be able to propagate. And when you're in the downside of solar cycle, the amount of energy might actually lower the maximum usable frequency um, as far as being below 20 megahertz sometimes. So it means that uh, 10 meter band won't be open. Even the 15 meter band, I've seen the 15 meter band dead from just being, you know, uh, too low of a solar cycle. You know, we just come out of a very long period of low activity, by the way. Solar cycle 24 is very unique and uh, it's very, very interesting to see what's going to happen and um, you know there are some reports that the next solar cycle 25 will be even smaller than the one we have now and if you got to think about one thing is that solar cycle 24 is presently the the, the smallest um, solar cycle in 100 years so uh, it seems that we have to make with you know that feature now, in a solar cycle, there's a lot of things that happen. Uh, usually, when we get near to the peak, at the peak, and even on the downside, close to the peak, there are more sunspots, but it also means there are more solar flares. And solar flares, and you can see one because there was one this week. This is a solar flare that happened this week, which is a giant explosion on the sun, basically. It hurtled a... Um, CME, a coronal mass ejection, which are charged particles that was sent towards Earth, basically. So the first thing that happens when there's a um, a solar flare is absorption. Usually there will be a um, kind of a radio blackout, but that will ha actually have effect only on the side of Earth that is in sunlight. And that happens very quickly because 
that effect is directly um, you know eight minutes after the uh, solar flare because it goes at speed of light so usually solar flare eight minutes later the sunlit side of earth will have a deep absorption uh, because it actually destructs part of the ionosphere and so that destruction of the ionosphere that temporary destruction of the ionosphere will have an effect of uh, all shortwave propagation pretty much go away for you know a few minutes to uh, an hour or two sometimes when there's really big flares and then you know the ionosphere actually settles back and slowly comes back to its normal um, self basically and there's um, all sorts of things happening including you know delayer absor absorption and all of that that's the first thing when there's a solar flare the second thing that will happen is that CME that coronal mass ejection is the second part now not all solar flares are what we call earth directed it means that when there's a solar flare that explodes at the edge of the Sun usually we will have a, a radio blackout but that's the only effect and it lasts you know an hour or two and it's over but when the solar flare is more in the center of the solar disk that cloud of particle of charged particles will reach Earth and will interact with the atmosphere and the uh, geomagnetic field around Earth and will create uh, a different effect and that will be discussed in another part where we're going to talk about um, you know oral activity and uh, when there's geomagnetic storms I'll, I'll make a one just for that so look for that when you want to complete your knowledge of that but usually what happens is that you know geomagnetic storms will also interfere a lot with shortwave propagation um, in a bad and a good way and you'll see that in that video because you'll see that you know I often see in the uh, the shortwave forums where people talk oh geomagnetic storm so I'm you know just turning off the radio there's nothing to listen to tonight well that's a mistake because it's not true that there's nothing to listen to on the contrary there's enhanced propagation usually and you'll see that when we get there so basically that's pretty much what happens in solar activity uh, so in general you want to have high solar activity but you'll have to live with the fact that there will be more solar flares and more geomagnetic storms in between that but the fact that the sun outputs more energy will help and the higher frequencies propagating a lot the maximum usable frequency even at night will be higher in a very high solar activity period for example as I'm making this video we are at the downside of solar cycle 24 and it's not very high you know the solar flux is not very very high so at night um, the maximum usable frequency drops very fast and in, in the last few days with the very long nights of winter I've noticed that propagation uh, about an hour and a half two hours after sunset is rather poor and even on low frequencies you know Radio Romania barely makes it to Eastern North America and that that tells you that propagation is not very good so solar activity has a big impact on what's happening on shortwave and we'll have a little more detailed look at the impacts when we talk about geomagnetic storms and also understand the components of solar activity how you can measure and understand what's happening thanks to some tools of um, that are available on the internet if you enjoy my videos why not subscribe you'll be informed when new videos are online and if you have any comments questions let us know give us thumbs up if you like the videos and hope you enjoy this series of shortwave propagation